Welcome back to Steve Rob Reviews. Today, well, the review is all going to be about, remember I used to use this product called Dielectric Grease? Well, for me, well, them days are over and uh, I've stopped using Dielectric Grease for the most part. The only place that I actually use Dielectric Grease anymore is really on spark plug boots and that's about it. So I found a much better product and this is the product right here. And uh, the reason why I've switched, well, this container here is about 28 grams or an ounce and uh, you can buy this product here in an ounce as well in a tube and it's about $5 and this one here is about $8 and if you buy it in a tube it's about $6. Now this tube right here, $20. Depends on where you live in the world, could be a lot less. But this here is far superior to this and I got a little bit of a demonstration here I'm gonna set it all up let's go over to the bench I'm gonna show you the back of this uh, tube this compound here and why this is far superior to using the uh, the old dielectric grease this is the exact same in many respects except it's got one feature that is well far superior besides the price and the price of this is about half the price of going to the store and buying this. So let's take a look at this. I got a little bit of a demonstration set up here and I'm gonna talk about this particular type of compound and uh, who uses it and where it should be used. Well, let's start off on the outside of the uh, tube and it's made by Gardner Bender and uh, it's called OxGuard Antioxidant Compound. And of course, yeah, Let's take a look here. Made in the USA, Milwaukee. So let's go on the back side here and let's just take a look what it says. So there's the instructions in English on the back. And as you can see, the first thing it says is it guards against oxidation. And that's the main reason for using this product is to prevent oxidation. I'm gonna explain that in the future a little bit here. And the next line down improves conductivity. The main difference between dielectric grease that is not conductive, there's no electron flow, you cannot get electricity to flow from one side to the other. It is completely, well, non-conductive. This product here is conductive, produces a cooler connection. And the main reason to use this type of stuff in the electrical trade was in the beginning with electrical wires, attaching a, uh, a wire from aluminum to copper or any other type of metal. And, and this product here works great at removing the, uh, the odds of getting increased oxidization. And uh, improves conductivity is the main one. And the reason why I've switched from using the dielectric grease at twice the price, and it does half as much. So let's take a look at the product here. I've got two squeeze tubes and I put one into a tub because I prefer using it in the tub. So let's take a look at it in the tub. So here it is here. And you know what? It is almost exactly the same, the same texture as dielectric grease. It's about the same. And if you were to put some on your finger and get it smushed around, well, you could feel it's about the same and it doesn't leave anything on your fingers. You can wipe that off so easily. But essentially, it is about the exact same texture, the flow rate, and uh, as far as I'm concerned, far superior to dielectric grease. So let's first start off with what is oxidization? Well, oxidization is really, well, it's really prevalent in a lot of cases when it comes to aluminum, aluminum to aluminum contact or even dissimilar metals, they'll oxidize. And here is a strip of copper right here. And if we just take a look at this end here, you could see how nice and shiny it is. And if we go to the other end, well, you could see how it's starting to go black and dirty and that's oxidization. So this was a piece that came off a piece of machinery and the wire was soldered on the end. Now, what would have been ideal is to put some of that compound on here first and then put some heat shrink over top and heat shrink it on because once it gets to the, uh, 
the atmosphere and the oxygen gets to a to a product well this is exactly what happens and uh, if we just separate it a bit here you'll probably see yeah in the middle there it's a little bit better than on the outside right but you can tell that the wires have been you know damaged from the oxidization and uh, you know it's corrosion actually that is like corrosion right so to prevent that well you have to prevent the oxygen from actually getting to your wire or you know using some kind of a product and uh, you know I, I like this particular product better because you know you cut it down to this far and it's good right so what would be an example another example of where you could use this product where uh, oxidization would appear and you've probably all heard this before so let's hear some oxidization yeah so here's just your regular flashlight a mag light this is all aluminum now listen to this you hear that squeaking that's oxidization that's exactly oxidization and this is all aluminum and it oxidizes in here to the point where sometimes when you open this up you'll see the powder coming out here because it's oxidized right so put some of that uh, that compound on there will eliminate a lot of that noise you hear it's going there See, it's still doing it now. So let's put a little bit on and let's see what happens. Okay, so here we are here. You don't gotta put a lot on. And that's what I notice a lot of people do is they go right crazy with the dielectric grease. Now, you, actually you could use dielectric grease on this if you wanted to as well, you know. But I mean, for half the price, I'm going with this. So that's good enough right there. And uh, let's put the cap on and let's see if it's done any better of a job. See how quiet that is now? Just get it worked in there a bit. There you go, there's one example right there. So let's go over to my uh, my fuse panel I have going on here and uh, I'm gonna show you exactly what I do when I'm hooking up, I got a breaker here, two breakers that'll go in here, and I'll show you what I do now uh, to make sure that this doesn't oxidize. So let's go over to the uh, breaker panel here. I'll put some on and I'll show you how it's actually used. Okay, so this is for a future project I'm gonna have, and all I'm gonna do is just butter these two sides. These are the two main posts on this panel, and this is where the, the breaker goes on. I'm just going to butter that in there just like that. I mean, you don't got to go crazy with it, right? And that's to prevent oxidization. And then on the back side, if you take a look where it in connects here, just going to put just a, just a little bit in there, not a lot, just a bit. And snap it in. Then on this side here, just a little bit in there. And then snap it in. Now I want to show you this right here. Now this is an old, this is an old disconnect. And uh, it's never been used. I took it out of the panel. It's brand new. I have taken these apart in the past. And uh, you know, they were just like a fungus in there. It was so bad. Now I just want to show you the connector on this side. Can you take a look at that and see how that is not nice and shiny copper? You know, you could just see how it's it, it started to have that oxidization on the side here already. And, and this is what happens. So of course, I would butter this all up too. And I'd put the compound on, you know, on each one of these here so that, you know, it didn't go like that. So before I would install this, I would get some uh, emery cloth and I would just polish these up a bit because you could see how there's oxidization on there like crazy and these have this has never been used before. So let's get another good example. Here you go right here just your regular battery 
And when you're putting this into a, uh, just a um, whatever type of uh, gadget you want to put it into, well, if you just put some of that on the end here, it'll prevent, especially the spring end or the other end of any type of uh, battery operated uh, fixture. Stop. You know, many times if you leave a battery in for long times, it'll corrode your contacts to just right crazy, right? So you put that on there and that will help immensely and it'll conduct it's not like dielectric grease that doesn't conduct it will improve the conductivity and uh, prevent all the uh, battery acid and everything you know if you leave it in for too long in high moisture conditions and, and this is the whole idea is this particular panel will be put into a high moisture condition outside in an enclosure but it'll still have high moisture conditions and I've taken some of these type of panels off in the past and they've been just rusted like completely crazy depending on you know the uh, you know the, the, the temperature and the temperature swings and the high humidity man it can do wreck to all kinds of electronics so let's take a look at a, another particular spot take a look at these right here can you see this can you see how the bottom one is like a copper brass and this one is like an aluminum. I had a friend of mine that had one of these on his trailer and he had the aluminum one put into the copper or brass one and he just left a, a, a spare pigtail to be plugged in and uh, just over the winter he could not take them apart because it just expanded with corrosion in here so much because there were dissimilar metals. One was aluminum and the other one was like a copper brass. So using that particular Gardner Bender compound I believe would have done a, a huge service because when you're putting in the uh, the old um, dielectric grease well it's not improving conductivity is it <laughs> so you know and I think improving conductivity is better and uh, you know when you can try to eliminate as much of the green goblins as possible well that's a good thing so we take a look at this panel right here and of course what I'm going to do is each one of these conductors when they are attached to the panel I'll just get the brush and I'll uh, I'll just coat the outside of the wires before I install them into the pins and that will improve over time and really that's where it came from for the electrical trade where they were dealing with aluminum wires that oxidized a lot or dissimilar metals that they had to twist like twisting a uh, copper wire with aluminum or even aluminum itself and you'll see a lot of connection points that are made that have a compound similar to this that has to be used so in the electrical field a lot of places depending on where you live in the world yeah it's it's mandatory that you have to use some uh, antioxidant compound because uh, well they've shown over the years that as the wires deteriorate you'll see the pins you see the pins down here that have to be tightened up well if you got wires that are starting to oxidize and deteriorate well these connections will get loose over time because the diameter of the wires are being reduced by the corrosion so let's take a look at another thing this is like the post on the outside you see on a battery okay a lot of people used to use the uh, the dielectric grease and smother it all over the outside here well, the dielectric grease is not conductive. So why, why bother using something that's not conductive? It still has the same properties. It keeps out the moisture and it, you know, it's good at uh, you know, repelling as much, as much of the uh, corrosion as possible. But it's not conductive. So for me, I thought, okay, well, I'll just go with this product here. Because you know what? It's conductive. And it's... It's far superior than using this stuff that is not conductive. So that's the main reason behind this. Yeah, and I just put this on here, smother it along the top here a bit, and uh, just make it like weather resistant and waterproof. Another spot that a lot of people use dielectric grease is on electrical connectors like this. And, uh, you know, for putting in a bulb and that kind of stuff. Well, again, Dielectric grease doesn't conduct electricity. So 
you know, using this particular formula right here that does, well, that's a no-brainer for me as well. So now let you're thinking, okay, so if it conducts electricity, you really don't want it to go from this side to this side and conduct the electricity and cause a short, right? Well, that's the first thing that I thought of too. So I, uh, you know, I, I looked at the formula and I thought, how conductive is it? Because it says improves conductivity. But how conductive is it? So I, I'm going to do a little bit of a test here and show you what I did before in the past to make sure that I wouldn't have any problems with the conductivity going from one side over to the other. So let's take a look at that next. Okay, so what I got it set here is I got it set for ohms and it'll beep. And I got it to the highest sensitivity range. So if we just take a look, we just get some of this here. And uh, you know, it's not conductive that much. I mean, if I touch the probes together, but uh, yeah, if I just put it in a, a string and try to connect it to each other, well, nothing happens. So it is not conductive to the point where, you know, where I can actually have a bead go from one side of the, uh, the test probe to the other side and nothing happens. Only when I actually touch it. So I'm saying, yeah, I can use this no problem in all kinds of areas. It makes it more conductive, but it's not that conductive because I have seen some formulas that are so, so conductive. They got it stuffed full of graphite. You know, it's almost like uh, anti-seize compound on your hands. But this stuff here, no, no, no. I'm not worried about having any sort of uh, shorts. Well, thanks for joining me here today. And if, you, if you're interested in this product and if it, you know, if it works for you, you know, in your particular needs, follow the instructions. And, uh, you know, if you just Google the product, well, you'll find the best price wherever you live. Now, I bought uh, this product here on uh, Amazon and I paid $20 a tube. Uh, I seen down in uh, the USA it was under $16 for a tube. So depending on the country and where you buy it from and what your retailer is, for me I found Amazon was the best price for me. And it was about half the price of me going with the uh, dielectric grease. And like I said, it's far superior. But it's not that conductive so I'm not worried about you know having shorts and that kind of stuff. But if it works for you, well, you know, just Google it and, uh, you know, see what you think about it. Let me know if any of you have ever used this product before and uh, if you've had any success with it as well. Because I think, for me, it's a no-brainer. It's more conductive than being non-conductive. And that's, that was the huge selling point for me was not just the price, but it's more conductive than non-conductive. So, thanks for joining me here today and come back again. If you haven't seen this channel before, you're welcome to subscribe and see some interesting products that I review and I buy myself. Cheers.